exports come from all industries and are not limited to food, wine and manufactured products. The state of South Australia has become a world leader in water treatment and capacity building. And it's taken this expertise to the world. Countries like India, China and the US are after its research and reuse technologies. In Adelaide, I caught up with the state's advisor on water opportunities and Hydrodis, a company selling water management systems in India. In India, we're working with the Rajasthan government to establish a centre of excellence in water resources management. That centre of excellence is going to look at uh, research partnerships, capacity building partnerships and industry partnerships to get the best localised solutions for the communities in Rajasthan. So Mark, tell us about the unique technology that Hydrodis has developed. Uh, Hydrodis has developed a technology that allows us to disinfect water without the need to transport, store or handle d dangerous goods. Um, it's a system that is dual disinfection and allows us to disinfect the water and then produce a residual free chlorine. Uh, the kill effect is the same as UV or ozone uh, with the benefit of a residual free chlorine in one process. And Carleen, how are government initiatives in India creating opportunities for South Australian companies in this space? Well, through the development of the Centre of Excellence, we're connecting um, South Australian businesses with Indian businesses through Memorandum of Understandings. Um, the Confederation of Indian Industries has a Memorandum of Understanding with our Water Industry Alliance. Members of our Water Industry Alliance, such as Hydrogis, are accompanying trade missions where we're introducing them at the highest level to the decision makers in, in the Rajasthan government um, that are making decisions about what technologies they'll use in the future. Mark, you've been to India on a trade mission with the South Australian Government. How has this created opportunities for your company? The benefit of being part of a trade mission with, with the South Australian Government has been that they've opened doors where we wouldn't have even found the street that door opened onto. Um, we've sat around boardroom tables with the heads of water boards and ministers that we know they exist, but how we would have found them and got to them would have taken years of work, whereas the, the government's program has fast track that for us and really allowed us to get onto the front foot with taking our technology to the world. Art Lab Australia is a South Australian government agency that exports its conservation services around the world. It preserves works of art and historical items across Asia, including a historic Indian sari worn by Indira Gandhi. I caught up with Andrew Durham in his Adelaide studio to find out how to export creative services to the region. We work quite hard to, to, uh, to make contact with our, to, to network with our, our colleagues overseas, uh, but also with our colleagues here in Australia. So uh, the heritage architects who are doing fabulous work in, in Hong Kong or uh, in um, Penang uh, and in India. Uh, so often we're recommended as the, as, the cons as the conservatist. I was with you in India when I saw the sari for Indira, oh, yeah. Indira Gandhi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are some of the interesting projects you've done? This was the sari that Indira Gandhi was actually wearing when she was assassinated. So it's, it's very macabre, of course, but uh, nevertheless very special. And about 3,000 people a day visit the Indira Gandhi Memorial Museum to see it. The other uh, interesting uh, projects in, in India include just a couple of years ago in Nagpur, which is right in the dead centre of, of uh, India, uh, the Ambedkar Museum. Now, I don't know whether you know about Ambedkar. He was very much he's considered the father of uh, the Indian constitution. You've been very successful in you know, Macau, Hong Kong, Malaysia, India, Shandong province in China. What advice would you give for other cultural exporters looking to sell yeah. services overseas? Well, I think we've got to, we've got to be as broad looking as, as possible to, to look at all the opportunities and to, to see what opportunities there are and, and uh, build up relationships. Uh, but equally, then you've got to sort of focus on the specifics and uh, concentrate on a, a specific project. I think that's where, uh, that's what my advice would be.